This is Blag the Ripper representing the Dwarves, and you're tuned to the sounds of Dying Scene Radio. Dying Scene Radio! Street, they call him B Pick. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yep, we're going already. Hello, say that again. My name is Black the Ripper, rock so legend. You, yeah, you know, like talk right into it like this. Unfortunately. Good evening. My name is Black the Ripper, rock legend. That's right. Hi. Yeah, man. Do you have a lot of gnome day plumes? I you know, do. I, honestly, actually, we both do, right? Bobby Pickles. We. I have a, you know, B-pick, my, pick, my birth name is Robert Piccarillo. We both have Italian last names, right? Yes, that's right. That's right. I am, what I am, is I am it? a Dago from way back. <laughs> Me too. Now, what is it about you that? You know, we invented civilization, that kind of thing. You know, art, food, you know, no big deal. Right. That's what, that's the Italian thing to me. Now, what is it with the name thing, though? The warrior name. It always comes out. You know, it's, it's a, it's a main state in uh, the dwarves culture, right? Everybody right. has... Everybody has these these names. That's right. These we nicknames? have some of the best names. We you know uh, over the years. Well, the guys in now it's the Fresh Prince of Darkness, uh, Dutch ovens, so named because because he's English. Yeah. Um, there's uh, uh, of course he who cannot be named, who's sort of the anti name. Right. Um, there's Chip Fracture. Uh, there's, uh, of course, on Blag the Ripper, Blag History Month, <laughs> Blag, you know, Blag Friday, just whatever, any kind of Blag thing you can get. Is that basically how he, who, who cannot be named, came about his name is because he kind of like just went against the thing that you guys were trying to do against other no, things? It, no, we, uh, he, Cause that's kind of like, we punk, always that's had like a new name. punking the punk stuff. We always had a new name for him. So after a while, it was like he's he who cannot be named. And we, we stole we even stole that from uh, Sam Hain, which was the band after the Misfits. They had a song called He Who Cannot Be Named. Really? So we, so we even stole that. Yeah, it was basically, yeah, it's just complete theft. Well, That's good the artists copy, thing. great artists steal, right? Exactly, yes. That's we right. are living proof of that. Hey, is there any way you could hold this too? I know you're asking for two things, bro. The, our long-suffering video director back there. <laughs> yeah. I've noticed that uh, you write very well, Blag. Uh, not well, not only through your Dwarves lyrics or your published books and zines, but through our correspondence back and forth. And uh, I just wanted to know when you first realized that you were talented in the pen department. Well, I thank you for saying so. Uh, it's pretty much the only thing I can do. Is Me this, too, this, man. This communication I have a degree in thing. English. Yeah. And so I obviously always notice as soon as I start reading somebody who knows how to write, right? Well, I thank you. And that, that's why texts drive me crazy because there's no commas and punctuation, no, no capitals. I get, yeah. I get weird, you know? Yeah, um, you know, reading, writing, and not arithmetic. That's, that's me. Me too. You know? Yeah. As I just mentioned, you... Uh, and uh, I corresponded back and forth in order to set up this Dying Scene Radio interview. Black, this is the greatest band in the world. Why, why not hire a lowly assistant to respond back and forth to assholes like me? Well, because it's half the fun to me. Like, I don't know. I know a lot of guys in bands, and they, they're always running away from anybody who wants to talk to them or take their picture or tell them they like their band. I, I don't really understand why you get in a band if, if you don't want to do that stuff. I thought that was the whole point, you know. Right, that's so, true. Uh, uh, you know, it, it's uh, if somebody writes to me and wants to talk to me, I'll talk to them. You know, it's okay. Um, I, I won't give you my whole afternoon or, or take you back to my hotel room or, or whatever. But I'll, uh, you know, I can answer some questions. There it's are okay. limits. Yeah. Um, how much of this operation is DIY? You know, um, and how long has it been that way? And uh, it's always been DIY. I've been told we're unmanageable. So I don't know, you know, uh, uh, I, I it's more like, uh, uh, you know, I think I would have preferred to have had management and people doing that stuff, but it just never turned out that way. And fortunately, I got I, I fell in with like great producers and great players. So I was able to make great records. And then I always had, you know, some good booking agents, so I didn't have to book my own shows. And just something about the management thing never never came about, you know. Mm -hmm. So it was sort of like, uh, uh, you know, it just fell to me. And I'm a totally incompetent manager, but I just, you know, 
that it keeps us underground. You, you know? just have to have that spirit of independence, right? Not, not really. If somebody control wanted freak to do stuff? it, I, if somebody wanted to do it, that'd be fine. <laughs> I, I don't think I'm a control freak. Uh, uh, I uh, only about making records. When it comes to making the records, I'm very much a control freak. But everything else, I'm I'm fine with it. I mean, I think. Most of that stuff is based on like what do people think is going to happen with your band? So when you're 20 and you're cute, everybody wants to be your manager and run your shit. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, when it becomes pretty obvious, like, no, we just make classic records and play great shows and that's it. You know, <laughs> then, you know, nobody really gives a fuck anymore. I don't know. I think for a lot of people, they, you know, I, I, I can I can, you know, b book a book an airline flight or make a phone call. Right. Like I think for a lot of guys in bands, the prospect of doing that is so scary that they never do it because because they're afraid and they. I mean, think schedules they need get messed up and, and airplanes get missed, yeah, right? Like is, what we're yeah, happening, is, what's happening which, right which here, at Bowery Electric tonight. That's right? right. I probably should have booked earlier flights for my band because they're not here yet. But that's who knows? Right. You know, that's, they're not. That's how it goes. That's why you know. Man, I know you probably everybody asks you this, but who conceptualizes all the album covers? Do you have a hand in that? That's me, of course. See, I knew it because Flag the of the writing brain. Yeah, that's you know, right. You know how to set it up, man. Yeah, but again, you know, I've gotten very lucky and had really good uh, uh, photographers. Uh, you know, you got to have good photographers. The girl that took this last batch, uh, J.R. Doty, very good photographer from from Los Angeles. And, you know, we got some hot porn babes and... Hence, this new record, Dwarves Invented Rock and Roll. We got a great cover on it, and, you know, it's pretty, it's, it's pretty fun. I know. I love the comic cockiness, man. It's so great. Yeah. Well, we are, we are the best band ever, and when people see us, they always agree. So, you know. Well, this is going to be my first time seeing you, man, and uh, hey, let's see if uh, and I, I share that same I apologize to the other bands that suck. You know, but it's not my fault. <laughs> Even though it was promoted on one of the competitors' websites, I can't fail to ask you about radio like you want. Uh, you co-hosted co a punk rock uh, radio podcast, not entirely unlike this one right here, Dying Scene Radio. And uh, actually, it's quite surprising, the similarities in the format. What made you want to start a podcast, and what happened to it? The last episode was 7, I, 25, I had a 13. friend, uh, I still have a friend, Mike Routier, who had a cool radio show on a pirate uh, station in, in San Francisco. And when that pirate station closed down, he suggested that we get together and do a podcast. And I really enjoyed it. You know, I got to interview a bunch of people and talk to people that I that I liked and you know it was a lot of fun pick out songs and talk and you know it was good but after three years I said fuck it you know I mean the last episode is very fun though people should go to radio like you want dot com because the last episode I talked to a Bali bombing survivor friend of mine and and that's an intense story uh, I, I would suggest anybody go check it out absolutely and speaking of Islamic fundamentalism our website got hacked I can't make this shit up by Tunisian hackers like kids and uh, tore our site down, thedwarves.com. So we when did were, this happen? We're in the process of putting it back up. Yeah, wow. this isn't even a hoax. Like this actually happened like last month. So pretty pretty interesting. There's some connection between us and Islamic fundamentalism. I don't I don't know what it is though. You know, I was I thought it was pretty much ignoring the political stuff. But well, you there have this you yeah. have the swarthy complexion of like a southern Italian. Somebody, That's right. Somebody probably uh, mistaken you for a jihad. <laughs> except, <laughs> except I'm tall and I have a large penis. So these all of these things don't you know you, you can you can't judge a book. We have like a kind of theme where we ask uh, a lot of bands that go on the road for like a, an insanely ridiculous road story. Do you have any that uh, you can share? Anything oh, crazy? I, tons, that just sticks? I know I know something like the dwarves is probably every show sure. is crazy. Yeah. So does anything like stick well, I was out reminded as... I was reminded just today of we played in Rochester once, which is stupid enough. And uh, we were playing with a band called Flipper uh, and the guys from Flipper kind of flipped out over something. And one of them trashed the dressing room. He broke a bunch of bottles and shit. So the owner of this like shitty club like, decided he wasn't going to pay any of us, even though like I wasn't even there when it happened and it didn't have anything to do with my band. You know, so I go I go backstage and I'm pounding on this guy's office door like, hey, open the fucking door, pay me. And he's ignoring me and I keep pounding louder and louder. Finally, I open the door and he's got a nine millimeter handgun just pointed right at my head. And it happened so quickly that I was just like. I didn't stop. Like, I didn't realize there was a gun pointed to me. Like, the door opened, and this dude's shit was right, like, pointing at my temple. And I was like, what the fuck are you doing, asshole? You know? And I was like, whoa. And then I realized, like, shit, man, this guy's got a gun, you know? Man, so, I, I've, I've actually been the victim of a home invasion, and I reacted the same way. Yeah, I came out like, screaming at like, like, get know. the fuck out of my house. Yeah, yeah. And they ran out. 
Could you yeah, believe yeah. that? And then I was like, oh my God, number one, <laughs> fight or flight mode. I can't believe I went to a fight like that. Uh, right, you know? right. And these guys had guns, two guys. Anyway, it's pretty, yeah. it's pretty crazy how you react in that. You know that it's, situation. It's, you trick it's your, a shame that we live in a country where every idiot gets a gun. You know, but that's how it goes. You know. Uh, do you in think fact, most idiots get two? Do you think you're gonna um, accumulate any insanely ridiculous road stories on this this East Coast run? Well, let's hope so. You know, I mean, uh, uh, I don't know. For me, it's I, I I have pretty limited tastes. You know, it's it's basically vaginas and humor. Those are the two things I enjoy. So you know. <laughs> As long as there's some of that. Thank you very much for your time, man. Can we get a station ID? Sure. Um, Dying Scene Radio, however you want to say it. Hey, this is Blag with Dwarves. You're listening to Dying Scene Radio. This is Blag the Ripper representing the Dwarves, and you're tuned to the sounds of Dying Scene Radio. Dying Scene!